Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And at the moment, Boris Johnson has secured a huge amount of power for the Conservative Party in government. Not necessarily his own personal power, because that can be taken away by his backbench MPs whenever they feel the time is right. And that will happen. But the party is well and truly in control. So what can and indeed should Labour do to make sure that the damage is limited to just one more parliament? No chances taken. There is something major that I'm not going to say do this and they'll definitely win. They've got to get a lot of other things right as well. But do this and it boosts their chances massively and can easily turn the tide. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So in terms of a few general and obvious points, Labour would, of course, have to face up to the realities of what cost them the last election and put those right in the minds of voters. In the minds of voters is the key point here. It is completely irrelevant what certain individuals may think about the particular issues and whether they were fair or unfair criticisms of Labour last December. They were the views of people who essentially decide who holds the balance of political power in the UK. That is a fact. Now, Labour have made a decent start, of course. You know, they've replaced the leader with someone who, in the form of Keir Starmer, has already blown away Boris Johnson's personal approval. In a head-to-head, -head, Starmer pisses all over Johnson. But this isn't presidential power we're talking about. It's parliamentary power. And there are nuances. And this is where the intricacies of political power in a parliamentary democracy with an archaic first-past-the-post system gets interesting. Now, I was reading an article this week by a recent president of YouGov. Now, YouGov, for those who've listened to me talk about polling in general, is one of only two companies that consistently, accurately predicts, predicts the results of elections in this country um, within the usual margin for error. Now, this guy, who's a very experienced pollster, used opinion data, so he was obviously happy that the way they gathered the data was suitable for his purposes. But he analysed it himself. And he said, looking at this, if there were a general election tomorrow, Keir Starmer would be Prime Minister. Now, be careful about the nature of parliamentary democracy here. There'll be people going, ah, but if you look at YouGov's own analysis, it says that more people would vote for the Conservatives. Yeah, yeah. The pollster wasn't saying that Labour would win the election, although you can still win the election with fewer votes. No, Labour would not win the election. In fact, Labour have a tough time winning the election even after a few more years. It's an almost impossible feat. What they were saying is that the Conservatives would lose their majority, which is all that's needed. They would still be the largest party in Parliament. But as they don't have any allies anymore, amongst the other parties, the majority of MPs would prefer to back Starmer as Prime Minister of either a coalition or a minority government. There has to be a Prime Minister uh, and it would still be Boris Johnson, ironically, unless a majority of MPs got behind someone else. They would not get behind Boris Johnson. The reason for this turnaround is because the Conservatives won their massive majority by playing the electoral game well. They did not get a majority of votes. You don't have to have a huge swing to get rid of the Conservatives' power. I mean, far from it. If the number of votes that Labour plus the Liberal Democrats got together was the same to 0.1% of voters that the Conservatives got. But the Conservatives translated that into way, way more seats. This is because they won a lot of seats by a small number of votes. And this is how you win an election. That's what you need to do. It's no good winning seats by huge margins. It's nice for the individual MP, but it's no good for the party. So in other words, it would only take a small swing back to Labour in a lot of seats for the Conservatives to lose that massive majority. And polling data suggests that this has already happened in terms of people's preferences, especially in the so-called Red Wall, where in the north of England, Boris Johnson's own words, the Conservatives borrowed seats from Labour. They know full well they will not win those seats next time round unless, unless they really impress. 
However, let's not go overboard on this, uh, the impact of this. It's a sign of progress, but there isn't an election tomorrow. There's an awful lot of things that will happen before the actual election. One of those things, some of those things the pollster noted in the article himself, I'll link it in the description below if you want to read it, but one of the things not mentioned but really massive is that Boris Johnson intends to change constituency boundaries and even hugely reduce the number of constituencies. Whatever the chances of a positive impact on a general election at the moment, Labour will have a tougher time of it in 2024 because of what Boris Johnson is going to introduce. He has got complete political power to reshape the next election to his liking. And of course, that, that will also be to the Conservatives' liking, which means they'll go for it, you know. Um, and there's nothing to stop it. This gerrymandering will go on because even if Boris Johnson is ousted before he can carry it out, and at the moment there's no rush for him to carry it out, it's in the interests of any Conservative leader to do this, and they will, of course, do so. So what can Labour do to give themselves the Herculean strength, quite frankly, to win over an unprecedented number of seats to gain power? It's not going to be ideal just, you know, being the Prime Minister of a minority government because you'd have to do an awful lot of horse trading. You'll be limited in what you can do. Now, obviously, getting all the key things right is important. You know, they've done that so far. What still remains to be seen is if Starmer, who's clearly the right person to be leader, has chosen the right people to support him. He can't do it all on his own. That means has he chosen the right people to be members of his front bench, his political advisers, key members of the NEC, um, the ruling executive for the party, and when the time comes, his election strategists. All of that is currently unknown. Uh, I don't even have a view on that yet. But one thing that blights all Labour attempts in elections is the vote of their natural supporters being split so many ways. A lot of votes will also go to the Green Party, the Liberal Democrats, as well as Welsh and Scottish nationalists, especially at the moment. Um, others will also go to pointless parties as part of an ill-conceived protest vote, something that is largely alien to the Conservatives, or at least it was until UKIP came into view. Now they've died a death, but it's the Brexit Party now. In fact, it will be interesting to see if the Brexit Party or the Reform Party, as they're going to call themselves, is still a force to have an impact in 2024. But Labour can't pin any hopes on that. They need to tackle their split vote. And there is an easy way. And it's, it's simply to put as their number one manifesto pledge, moving to proportional representation. A couple of years before the election, start to get the public debate going, start to emphasise the democratic benefits to this and make it their central plank of their election campaign. Not only would this give a fairer system of democracy and one that would benefit Labour in the long term, but would give them a huge electoral boost. Not because people will be so fired up for it that they'll vote for Labour in their droves. Don't worry, I'm not an idealist. I'm not talking about that. The reason is that there are a lot of supporters of parties such as the Liberal Democrats and the Green Party, and they know in a lot of constituencies that when they go to the polls, they're wasting their votes in their particular constituency. It counts for nothing in first past the post if their candidate is not really in the running. But with proportional representation, there's a good chance you can vote for the smaller parties, not the really tiny parties perhaps, but the smaller parties like the Green Party, wherever they stand and get someone elected from that party. Now, imagine if you were a Green Party voter, for example, but not in Brighton, where they actually do have an MP. And it's 2024 and the Labour Party are promising to bring in proportional representation. It's a key manifesto pledge. It's not something that's tacked on at the end. We'll do it if we get round to it at the end of the Parliament. No, no, it's front and centre. It's going to be one of the first things they do. And, and you know, they're running a campaign for greater democratic representation of people's views. In that scenario, you've got a choice. You can either carry on vote for the Green candidate, like you always do, knowing it's a wasted vote, and you'll probably end up with a Conservative MP. Or would you not vote Labour in this general election so that your vote would be meaningful in the next election when we've got proportional representation? Because then your vote gets to go to a Green 
Party MP. I think a lot would. And when elections are often determined, like I say, like the Conservatives proved, but it's been proven time and time again, you win the election by winning a large number of seats by a small margin. Hundreds can come down to, sometimes dozens. This could really swing it massively in favour of Labour next time round, despite the gerrymandering to come. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.